Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to do a USB BIOS flash on the Gigabyte A520i AC. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be doing a USB BIOS flash on the Gigabyte A520i AC. This is a micro ATX board, just picked this one up, so need to do a BIOS update on it. These boards only come in one particular revision, so there is only one version of this. So it's a very strong chance, depending on how long these have been on the shelves, that whatever processor you want to use, essentially, is probably not going to be supported, especially if you're looking at something like the 5600G, 5700G, which a lot of people will be with a ITX platform. Now, ironically, that is exactly what we're going to be putting on this. We are going to be using a 5700G, and it does require a BOSS version, which is actually quite new, uh, F13, I believe it is. So we're gonna go ahead today and do the BOSS update before we install this into our little Cooler Master NR200P, which I, if you wanna see how that goes, obviously do subscribe to the channel to see the build in that. But for today's video, we're gonna get this up and running, ready for it to accept the processor. Now you can do this with a fully built system if you want to. I know there's gonna be some of you that will ask the question. You can, although for my money, personally, doing it with a bare board, rules out a lot of things. So if you cannot get the bars to flash for some reason, if it's got other things connected to it, such as graphics card, CPU, RAM, etc., etc., you basically have to disconnect most of those anyway to work out why it's not flashing. Or potentially you've gone through the steps wrong for actually getting the BIOS onto the USB stick. And not all USB sticks are compatible. So let's go through some of the things you will need to actually perform this task. So first of all, obviously the motherboard itself, something to rest the board on. Uh, we're gonna use the motherboard box, so that's gonna be absolutely fine. You will need a power supply as well. So we're gonna use this little Tough Power SFX power supply. You only need to use the 24 pin, which is the main power, and also the eight or four pin for the supplementary EPS power. The others you don't have to worry about. If you're not too sure where the BOSS flash is on the motherboard itself, if you look at the IO shield on the back, it is clearly stamped on there. And if you look at the back of the board itself, you'll see you've got the BOSS flashback button, which is this one here. Check this one first of all, make sure that when you press it, there's a definite click to it. If you press it and there's no noise at all, it means the switch is defective, in which case you will not be able to flash your BIOS. Well, you will, but not via this method. The USB you need to use for the BOSS flashback is color-coded, so that is in white, and it's directly next to the BOSS flashback button, so yeah, you shouldn't go too far wrong there. When it comes to the USB drive, it does have to be a 32 gigabytes or smaller. Now, the actual file itself is about 32 megabytes, so this is way, way, way a lot bigger than it needs to be, but you have to format the drive to FAT32, so make sure it's a drive that you don't need the data on, etc and that you can format to FAT32. XFAT does not work, so if your drive is larger than 32 gigabytes, then you will not be able to format it in FAT32, at least within a Windows operating system. So that is pretty much it for the kind of introduction. Let's head over to the PC and we'll download the file, get the USB stick ready, and transfer the file onto the USB. Okay, so this is our Windows 11 desktop machine, and you need to go over to gigabyte.com forward slash motherboard forward slash a520i-ac-rev1. I'll put links for this in the video description. Just make sure this is the uh, the right looking board for your particular setup. You can see pictures there, etc. So go over to the support tab, which is over here on the right hand side, and then you'll have downloads. If you're not too sure which BIOS version you need, essentially I would go with the very latest one anyway. But if you're looking and you don't want to go all the way to the very latest one, then you can just scroll down through here, find your processor on the left-hand side. So say, for instance, you're wanting to use a 5600G, which is this one towards the bottom. Then you just scoot across, and it says there, BOSS F13. So again, if you're using a 5500, then it'll be BOSS F14, etc., etc. The 4000 and 3000 series processors are all supported pretty much out of the gate, at least on BOSS F2 or higher. So we're gonna go with the uh, latest version. So let's go back to our downloads page and we're gonna scroll down a little bit until we find this section here, BIOS. Click on that one to expand it. And then we can scroll up. So there's quite a few versions available starting from the initial release. And the very latest one is currently version F16A, which was released on the 8th of February, 2023. 
and this updates the motherboard to a GSA V2 1.2.0.8, which also uh, rectifies some of the vulnerabilities found in the AM4 platform. So I would suggest going for the latest one if at all possible. If there's a newer one available at the time you're watching this, then obviously the same applies, just get the very newest one you can. This appears to be not a beta, so it should be absolutely fine. So we're gonna go ahead and click on download and choose a download location. I'm just gonna save it to the desktop for simplicity, but you can save it to wherever you want as long as you know where it is. And just click on save and we can now minimize this window and prepare the flash drive. So open up Windows Explorer and with your USB drive plugged in, that's that one there, USB drive D. And we're gonna right click on it. I'm gonna choose format. Obviously make sure that there's nothing on there that you actually need and choose FAT32 as being the file system. Allocation size, you can set to default. And if there's anything in the volume label, just make sure that you remove anything that's there. For some reason, BAS flashing doesn't appear to like having volume labels attached to drives. So remove that if you're having problems, if you haven't done so already. When you're happy, click on start. And obviously this will erase all data as you get a warning there. We're okay with that, so we're gonna click on okay. That should format a few seconds, so we can close that down now. We can go back now to our downloaded file. So this is our BAS file. We're gonna right click on it. Then we're gonna choose extract all and choose the destination. We'll just choose the desktop still. That'll be absolutely fine. So inside of these, we've got all the BAS files. There's a batch file as well for doing the Windows flash, etc. So because we're using it on the BAS flashback system, we have to actually rename the file. So something to actually bear in mind here, you do have to make sure that you have file names showing. And if you're not too sure, if you go into options here and choose view, and you can have show hidden files and also untick here where it says hide extensions for known file types. As soon as you've got that, that's okay. So as long as you can see that the file extension on there, that's absolutely fine. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this file and delete everything. And we're going to call it gigabyte, spelt like this, dot bin. And when you're finished, press enter. And it will come up with a warning saying if you change a file name extension, the file may become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? We're absolutely fine with that because that is correct for our particular purpose. So we'll click yes. And now right click, choose copy, then select our USB drive, right click and choose paste. And there we go, there is our bin file on our newly created drive. So now we can eject that from the system and we can head over to the motherboard. Okay, so the next part of this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So we just need to hook up the motherboard. So we've got our power supply here, our eight pin and our 24 pin connectors. So the eight pin connector is in this top corner. So we can go ahead and do that one first of all. It doesn't really matter which, which way around you do it, as long as you uh, plug both of them in. And I've got our 24 pin, which is on this rear edge here. So. Make sure that is in and firmly seated and then just put the board back down and then you need to apply power to the actual power supply when you've got the actual power supply turned on then grab your usb drive plug it into the boss flashback port again which is the color coded one there which is white all the others are blue at least in that block so plug it in there and what i like to do is to press and hold the boss flashback button in for about three seconds just count to three then release it, and then it's effectively just waiting. So let's go ahead and do that. So one, two, three, and release. And you can hopefully see there is a flashing LED there, which is basically a status LED. So what you don't wanna do is to turn off the power or anything like that whilst the LED is flashing in any way. So what we're looking for is for the LED to start flashing, change speed, and then eventually at the end, it will just turn itself off. Now, if you've got a power supply, which supports various different low power modes, you may find that your power supply will not start spinning. Potentially, if this is in a built system, you've got other fans in there which are connected, potentially they may start spinning. It depends on the setup you've got. So anyway, that is now flashing and our power supply has just clicked on. The uh, LED went on for a little bit longer there and it's now flashing slower. So basically what it's done is it started initializing the boss flashback routine and it's read the file and it's now flashing the bar. So just leave it alone, don't touch it, let it go on and do its thing. If you've got to a point where it's just flashed a few times and then stopped and gone off completely after a few seconds, 
Essentially, that means either your USB stick is not compatible, it potentially isn't formatted correctly, or potentially the BAS file that you've downloaded is the incorrect one for your model. Sometimes these boards are actually used in OEM machines, such as iBuyPower and Cyber Systems, that kind of thing, all those kind of uh, made systems. What they'll quite often do is they'll buy a batch of motherboards from Gigabyte and have them custom made for them. If potentially your PC is from one of those vendors, it's always worth heading over to that vendor's website, checking on the system and go to their support page because they may have a slightly different BIOS version for you. Anyway, with that said, we're gonna let it do its thing and we'll come back when it's finished. And there we go, you just heard the power supply click off and the LED has gone off as well. So that is essentially it, done and dusted. Happy days. So there you go, that is the BOSS flashed at this point now, depending on your setup, obviously, remove the USB drive, because you're not gonna need that now. Uh, disconnect things, you can now install the motherboard into your system. Potentially you might want to just grab your processor, stick it in with your RAM, and just see if you get a output on either the HDMIs or the display port, or alternatively, if you're using a separate graphics card, obviously put your graphics card in and see if you can get an output. Sadly, on these particular boards, there isn't a diagnostic LED, so if it doesn't boot for some reason, there's no real easy way of finding out. But you're lucky because we have a Discord chat with tech support, so if you are getting problems and uh, your system isn't working for some reason, please feel free to head over to there and the support is totally free. You may have to wait for someone to actually come online, but it is free, so it is what it is. Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful too. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then hit the subscribe button and the chime notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.